So you had some fun shooting your Smith & Wesson MP9 Shield Plus, but now it's time to get it cleaned up. Especially if you plan on carrying this handgun, you want to make sure anything you carry is clean and well maintained in case you need it. Things to get this job done, you'll want a push through cleaning rod like this one about pistol length. You'll want an attachment for pull through of cloth patches. You will want a brush attachment like this right here, a little brass 9mm brush. You'll want a brush for scrubbing if there's anything really filthy in here or just a cheap toothbrush. Gloves, if you so choose, because you'll be working with chemicals. This is a break-free CLP cleaner, lubricant and preservative. Just put it in a little squirt bottle, a little cheap 50 cent thing, just to have a little bit easier of use. But they sell these actually, the CLP in giant bottles right off of Amazon. Links for all this cleaning stuff will be down below for you. And some nice cotton patches for cleaning, nice, Good size for nine millimeters is probably the way to go, but you can also get larger ones or just cut up a old t-shirt and go that route. And of course you will need a Smith & Wesson MP9 Shield Plus. So let's get into cleaning. Step one, take your firearm, take the mag out, check, check again. Very important to check the chamber. Make sure there's nothing in there because you're going to be pulling the slide back, lock it back like so, pull down the takedown lever right here and let it go back home. Then you're going to need to pull the trigger and you can see the slide pops right off like so. You can leave the frame as is, put the magazine to the side unless you really want to clean that slide. Guide rod and spring barrel, slide, and these are the four pieces you'll be working with. You can put your gloves on now if you want. So let's start with some of the little pieces here first. It's kinda the route I like to take. Take a patch here, spray the CLP on there, and you can start by simply cleaning the outside and wiping it down especially the ramps here, you can see that, absolutely filthy. You can get down in here, and actually you could use this. They also sell these plastic picks you can get, because you don't want to obviously go metal to metal, you don't want to scrape it up too much if you can avoid that. But you can get these little picks that I'll put a link down as well. All right, and then you take your pull through here, you can use these patches as much as you want. If you wanted to reuse this, you could. You have a little bit of life in there, but honestly, just put it aside. Get a fresh one. Put it through right here. And it works out to get that liquid right in the middle, all the cleaner right there. All right, actually you probably want to go like so. Reason being is because that is the way the rifling goes with the round. So pull through from breech to front, like so. And if you pull, you can kind of see it rotates with the rifle a little bit. Rotates a lot more with like a rifle or something, but I do this just to get a little bit of the cleaner in there. You can also kind of spin it around not too bad. Take a brush. Again, run it through like this. Now this is still relatively clean, so what I'm gonna do, try to get in some of that rifling there. I'm just simply going to pull through, like so. And there you go, you can get a little bit more in there. Add a little more CLP. It's really not hard to clean a handgun. You can probably do it in under 10 minutes. So if you go to the range, you want to clean a few, just sit back, watch some TV or something. It's kind of therapeutic. <laughs> there you go, a little better that time. I'm gonna do one more. Get those grooves real clean. 
So you just wrap it around the brush, that way the brush, little bristles there, have a better chance of pushing the patch into the rifling in the barrel. more CLP and let's pull through there you go look at that a little more in there and the goal is you kind of just go until you feel comfortable with how clean it is so if you want Use some more here. Try to use the patches efficiently. And take a look in there. It looks really good. I don't know if I really want to do more. Again, you can use as much as you need here. And you can see you kind of leave a thin film of that CLP on there. That's actually good. You don't want to hit it with another dry patch. Kind of want to leave a little bit because it is a preservative. So this part is done. Move it up here. Take your springs here. It's a captured guide rod. Take a little more CLP. And actually just go through and twist and follow up the spring. Cleans the outside and the top and bottom of each of the coils as it goes up. Actually works really well that way. You can kind of see right where my fingernail was. You can just do that a couple times. I mean, it's not exactly a necessary thing to do, but what you're also doing is putting a little bit of that CLP on all of the metal parts here. And that is going to help preserve that as well, help with rust, keep lubricated. Now we can go over to the slide. See, we're already kind of flying through here. Slide doesn't look too bad. What we can do is you can take a patch. If I can find my plastic picks, they seem to have disappeared on me, but if I could find them, this is when you put a plastic pick in there. Really clean in these slots here. Now it's important to note, you don't want to just dump a bunch of oil in anything here. You can kind of see how these are all moving parts. Right here, it's all part of the firing pin mechanism, especially right there. That is a part you do not want to spray oil directly down. So if you ever put oil on the rails or anything like that, or if you do end up putting some oil in here, you want to make sure that that firing pin hole is facing down because you don't want to go like this and get any of that oil in there, which could pose an issue down the road. Not necessarily right away. I mean, this oil tends to evaporate pretty quickly when you're shooting, but you don't want to risk any kind of malfunctioning issues with gunking up that firing pin. So just go along the rails here, get your fingernails in, you can kind of see how filthy it is. You can go against the firing pin face here. That one might take a couple of patches, nice and filthy there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there you go, a little bit of CLP. These pads are really good to the tech mats. I've been using this one, this one's probably 10 years old, this Beretta one, it's my first one. I love it. They hold up good. One thing you might wanna check here is the extractor. Something I think a lot of people miss is the extractor. You may wanna put a patch behind it and just push it through gently because you can see how much fouling is right behind that extractor. You could use this if you don't have any picks or anything. A lot of people use uh, like Q-tips to get into the fine pieces here. 
especially in the rail, you can actually go and run it like so. Kind of see it picks up a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna say that one's good. Oh, maybe on the front here, just because. There we go. And again, user preference, how much you wanna put on there. Frame, pretty simple. You got just a few metal pieces in here and the actual drop-in for the rails and the trigger mechanism right in here. Again, don't wanna spray any kind of oil directly in there. So, just go through. Polymer doesn't exactly need a good uh, coat of oil, so. These plastic polymer Wonder 9s don't really need too much on there. If you did have a metal frame, you probably want to clean the frame up a little bit more. Anywhere there's a working, moving part. Fold over the patch, kind of get underneath those rails there. That I think is important because you're going to need to put fresh oil in there. Just fold it, do a quick scrub back and forth. And it's good to use these good quality patches too because then they don't leave a bunch of residue or any kind of fibers that you don't want sticking around. Get in here. I got the magwell a little bit. Trigger there. Again, be gentle too. You need all these pieces to stay where they are and not bend or anything like that. And polymer, I mean, honestly, whatever you want to do, it's it's plastic. This, I mean, some little pieces over here you can kind of clean up a bit, but just put maybe a coat of oil on there. That's what these gloves are actually good for. I'll show you when you put it back together. Anything kind of residue on here, you can kind of coat on the outside, but I mean with polymer like this, you don't really have to. So that is it for the cleaning portion, right? I mean, what, 10 minutes, maybe? Now we take all of our parts, we need to lubricate as we put this back together. So key part here is to look for wear marks on your handgun, all right? Not the ramp, you don't care about that. That one has a little bit of residue on there from the gloves, from just cleaning out the barrel, but you can kind of see some of the marks here. So I just go and grab a little dab right in there. Drop that in. I do have a dropper bottle somewhere too. A little dropper might be the way to go. Spring goes in like so. Now it's actually important also, as you can see here, that this has no way to kind of like lock in place. So when you compress this and slide it in, this goes back and forth a little bit. It needs to be dead center. All right, so you need to make sure it's dead center in there. Now I don't have this little dropper, but we're going to put a little dab right in the middle where it's worn down a little bit right there. There we go, just a little bit, like so. Now on here, you have these rails. So what you do is do a little squirt right here, right here, just a little spritz. Right here, right here. Wipe any excess that's on top. And there you go, that is it. So what you can do now, slide it on. Keep in mind there's a little piece sticking up here. It goes right in that back hole, like so. And this is the part where this would poke out. If you did it wrong, this is gonna poke out because it's not perfectly lined up. So you're gonna lock the slide back, slide lock on, fold it, close it, wipe it down a little bit. That's when these gloves kinda come in handy and just kinda Wipe it down. I've always used it as a little extra lubrication. It looks all shiny and nice. Function test. The Plus really has a good trigger. And that's it. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. Again, real quick, easy. If you're a first time gun owner or first time owner of a Shield Plus, this is how it's done, and this is kind of how you can do it with a lot of firearms. I've been doing this for a long time. The same way, same method, no issues with rust or reliability or anything like that. And it's just good to kind of get these cleaned and maintained on a regular basis because they are tools, they will rust, they will have malfunctions if they are not kept up well. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, hit them down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. As always, subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up. really helps me out. 
head over to Instagram, follow me there, like us on Facebook for all the latest and greatest deals on the internet. And we'll see you guys in the next review.